We are well into the winter months now, and you can feel it, can't you? That urge to get away. Maybe some beach time to warm up those bones of yours. Maybe a hockey sports kind of road trip. Well, when you pack your bags, make sure you don't forget Alberta Blue Cross. There's only one thing better than sharing memories, and that's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross travel insurance protects your memories and more wherever travel takes you. Visit ab.bluecross.ca slash travel for more information. Alberta Blue Cross, celebrating life's memorable moments inspired by hockey. Hey guys, it's Pinder chatting about Charm Diamond Centers. Did you know that Charm has been Canadian owned and operated since 1972? And there's over 85 locations coast to coast to coast with Charm and their sister brands. Uh, get this now, you wanna get something custom made? How about custom ring building delivered in less than four weeks? That's unreal. That is the Charm Masterpiece program and they've got unbeatable pricing policies as well. Whether it's mine diamonds or Canadian lab grown diamonds, check them out. For more information, go to charmdiamondcenters.com. That's charmdiamondcenters.com. All right, gang, listen up. It's time to learn the pro pose. Coach? Bend and snap. Beautiful form. Nice arm extension. Facial expression. I could use some work. All right, let's see it. The pro pose. What's that guy doing? I think that's the bend and snap. That's a whole different deal. Mm. Charm, home of the pro pose. Oh. <laughs> Every all-star needs a sidekick to support them. Just like every Wendy's meal needs a six piece of nuggets. Right now, Wendy's is teaming up with Daily Face-Off Fantasy to bring you weekly prizes like free nuggets, burgers, and more. So if you think you're an expert in all things hockey, prove it. And if you aren't already, start adding a six piece to your Wendy's order for just $3.49. It's the dynamic duo even you never saw coming. Sign up for Daily Face-Off today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. And now, more of Afterburner. Well, you wonder if the Flames weren't a touch grateful this one didn't head to overtime as the Buffalo Sabres pulled this one out late in the game, way closer than the final score of 4-1 would indicate. It was 2-1 in the home stretch. A pair of empty netters sealed the win for Buffalo over Calgary. It's Cammy and Kent here on Afterburner. So, Kent, mm. thoughts, questions, concerns? Yeah, it's kind of the same as last night where I thought the Flames played pretty well, uh, probably well enough to win if they'd gotten some different bounces. But they're kind of in the, the point with the roster where – you only have to make a couple of mistakes and you're probably not scoring that many goals most night unless you get the bounces. So that's going to be the rest of the season, I think. And, you know, we've talked about losing the right way, playing right. entertaining hockey, but still moving up on that draft board. And that's what we got tonight. It was a lot of fun to watch, not crisp, not detailed, not necessarily textbook, but some really good moments for a Calgary side that had to be gassed. I think they got in at 2 a.m., after coming yeah. back from Vancouver after last night's game, and you're coming up against a motivated Buffalo squad that was coming off an embarrassing loss. Mm. But I will admit, I was curious about the Flames deciding to go with the same lineup as last night. Obviously, Dustin Wolf starting aside. Because they may not be mathematically eliminated, but they are now at a max of 95 points, which would put them second in the Pacific and that's a tall order. I yeah, just wonder I think, what they are playing for right now. Yeah. Just pride. I did look at the money puck um, probabilities in the middle of the game. I think they're down to 0.3% <laughs> chance of making the playoffs. So there's a chance, but it's not plausible. So it's, you know, it's a lot of the kids are going to play hard no matter what, because they're always trying to establish themselves. It's part of the reason I'd actually like to see Coronado get back in the lineup because if he's going to be on the parent squad, let's let's get him some ice and and see what he can do. Yeah, because it's just frustrating to see him in the box, especially when there's rumors floating around that Andre Kuzmenko not be playing at 100% health, which at that point's like, all right, we don't really know what the future is there. Why do we want to risk having that asset get further injured when 
this guy is just itching for more practice at this level and he's sitting in the box and we have a Jacob Peltier who's down with the AHL squad and had a goal and two assists tonight. Yeah, I mean, if someone like Kuzmenko is is playing through something, uh, that I don't see any reason to, to make him play through it and, and get out there. And you can see he's, he's struggling, and maybe that's just a player because he's not a great back checker. He's not a great skater at the best of times, and you can see him kind of huffing and puffing on the back check uh, tonight especially. So, yeah, if he's playing through something, yeah, let's get let's get the kid in there, see what he can do. He's like a peacock. You got to let him fly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it seems like it would be prime time to get the kids in there. I know I see some comments about, oh, they are, they're playing for the draft. They're playing for draft position. I don't know that a Matt Coronado is going to be the guy who's getting you on the winning side of these games night in, night out, especially yeah. when you do have some, uh, tough Pacific division matchups coming up, but at least we're getting yeah. to see some Dustin Wolf reps. Unfortunate that he's getting these reps because of a damn Vladar season ending injury. But it looks like he's really settling in, which is what we wanted to see from him getting more than just the odd look at the NHL level. Yeah, he's starting to look more comfortable too. Good saves tonight. That was, you know, the I think the Thompson breakaway and stopped that nicely at another couple sequences. And yeah, super strong all night. No chance on the second goal, obviously. Yeah, that one aside, it was a little bit of a goalie battle. Mm -hmm. Fair to say. Yeah, the Buffalo goalie, uh, Lukanen, I, th I think is. <laughs> Luko Pekka Lukanen, one of the best yeah, names in hockey. That's a great name. He played I'll really say, well. I'll say Cal Clutterbuck is also one of my other favorite hockey names. I think <laughs> that's an excellent name. Well, we can go back to Zarly Zalapsky if you want, but there's a lot of great hockey names out there. But uh, he played really well. He kept Buffalo in it, especially when the Flames were pressing for that tying goal uh, late in the third there. He's uh, scrambled, made made it work. Heck yeah. So not a ton of highlights for us to work with tonight, but we've got one. Yeah. This is our Betway highlight okay. of the night. Get the Betway app on your phone and bet the responsible way with Betway. It's Calgary's lone goal. Yeah, he just tipped it right between the goalie's legs. Perfect tip and it happens. Hey, you said they need to get some bounces and that is a uh, Huberto's 10th of the season. The apples to Sharon Govich season ads for the Calgary Flames at this point. Just the role he's been expected to step into and now he's got three points and just a handful of games with Calgary. I really like what they're doing with that player too. And obviously the, the org must have had their, their eye on him, but they're giving him all sorts of chances to establish himself, make, make his presence known, make an impact. And that's what you need to do in the transitional phase that they're in. You pick up guys who I call no downside bets, which means, you're really not sure what their upside is, but they're probably not replacement level or worse. So you, you get them in the lineup, you get them some reps, and you see what you have on your hands. It's like a free draft pick, basically, like a free kind of, yeah, lower round pick. Like it's not hurting you by taking them on. He's not, he wouldn't necessarily be robbing another well deserving mm. player of a spot. It's just, it's worked so far. Yeah, and maybe he becomes part of the future, or maybe you flip him in, in, in a year or two. So Jonathan Huberto, technically the Buffalo Sabres, in on all four goals of the night, but that is our Betway highlight of the night. <laughs> and right now yeah. with Betway, you can get a free bet up to 200 bucks if your first bet loses. So you make the account, you scan that QR code up there on the screen and redeem your bonus. You place a bet, there's no minimum amount necessary, and if it loses, you'll get refunded up to 200 bucks, and then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. Uh, offer available only uh, outside of Ontario. And if I was betting on another sport, it would be curling <laughs> because we got to talk about one win tonight. Come on, Rachel right. Holman, bringing down the world champion against Team Tiernzoni from Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you watch curling? I do not. So I cannot. Oh. <laughs> I'll go with you. Yes, you're like, yeah, yeah. Those are real Whatever. names. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Now that we actually have it up, I feel like uh, we had talked about it quickly before we started the show. I almost feel like we should go back on that being the highlight of the night now. And we're just going to talk some more about one Dustin Wolf. He ended up saving 23 of 25 on the night. 926 save percentage. That's not bad at all. Now he's 2-2 uh, two -two in his uh, last four starts. Of course, uh, if you look at his last five games, he did have the Colorado incident where he was called in in relief, but he did. 
stop them all, but I thought he looked dang good tonight. He was a little far back in his crease on that first goal, which is like oddly enough for such a tall guy. I remember Roberto Luongo really having that problem around like 2011, 2012. He just moved so far back in. And that was when you started to see like the beach ball memes. (laughs) Unfortunate. This wasn't that. That was a, he made some really sharp stops tonight. Yeah, I yeah, think we have Mike the Smith the, used to stand on the, the goal line, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another guy was kind of in his prime in that era. Yeah. For that save. Yeah, yeah, there was the Tage Thompson breakaway that we've already talked about. I was uh, really impressed by Wolf's composure when he had Dylan Cousins and uh, Benson on the doorstep just jamming away there and managed to keep it all out. Yeah, it's it's good for the organization that he's starting to look uh, like the player I think they think he is, right? So it's um, they're taking this opportunity, get him reps, especially with Vladar out. I mean, it's, it is a no-brainer. And we discussed last night, so how, how many games is Wolf going to start? So the back-to-back's obviously a no-brainer, but we'll see what they do for the rest of the season here. There is one more back-to-back on the schedule, 12 games to go now. I'd love to see him get half of them, honestly. But yeah, me too. Yeah, Calgary, uh, 0-6 on the second half of uh, back-to-backs this season. Yikes. And they break the goose egg. Yeah, they got one more chance, and that'll be uh, the first game will be against L.A., and then the second half will be against Anaheim. So Possible. not to dunk on the Ducks. They're pretty bad. Not great. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're bad. <laughs> no, they're gonna be they're gonna be uh, picking high this year. Uh, one Again, other thing yeah. I did want to mention off the top on a very different note, I think the Flames did a really good job with their tribute and moment of silence for Chris mm-hmm. Simon. Yeah, yeah, I know. And they had previously put out a tribute online when the news came out earlier this week that he'd passed away far too young. But I'm really glad they did something at the Saddle Dome too, like. Beasley always carries those moments super well. The Flames always treat these things with a lot of care. And one of the pictures that really struck me in this slideshow was of Simon uh, just jumping up on the glass and seeing the fans Mm -hmm. cheering with him right there. Like, I know that's, I know that's 90% of hockey celebration shots, but it just imagine doing something that moves tens of thousands of people all at once. Well, he arrived at the perfect time, right? Yeah. Because he came in for the, (laughs) the cup run during the Cinderella season that year. So he came in and yeah, the, the energy was very high all the time uh, during his time here. Yeah. So thoughts, well, wishes with his family, wish things had absolutely turned out differently, but glad there was able to be that, that moment to honor him with a fan base that really cared for what this guy brought to Calgary yeah, in his agreed. time here. Yeah. Yep. So other things coming up with the flames today, uh, the last part of the Elias Lindholm deal is uh, done and done. Is it? Yes. Uh, 21-year-old defenseman Yoni Yermo that, signing a right. yeah. two-year entry-level deal, and he will go on to join the Wranglers for the end of the season. He's the last piece in the Lindy deal. Connie has now uh, inked Yermo and Hunter Rustevich. So Yermo's contract with the Flames, it's going to be two years with an AAV of 850K. Ah. You beat me with the graphic, Jack. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Yeah, he was originally a third round pick by Vancouver, uh, 82nd overall in 2020. How many defensemen are on the Wranglers at this point? Seems Ooh, like I they'd be drowning. I know them. I have their game sheet on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of bodies. Yeah. And Fourier's back too, right? So he is indeed back. He had a goal tonight. Yeah. Yeah, oh. no, the, the Wranglers actually crushed San Diego tonight. Uh, Mitch McLean oh, got his first hat trick. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> Mitch McLean hat trick. Good for him. <laughs> yeah, That's right? fantastic. What was the score? 8-4. Uh, oh, wow. It's a lacrosse score. Good. Awesome. Yeah, right? they've been having some problems recently, so that's good news for them. Yeah, they have been battered this year, but it feels like everyone uh, kind of got in on the action on this one. Uh Slovyov scored his fourth and his fifth. Uh, who else got there? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, Peltier had a goal and two assists. Poirier scored his second, and Adam Klapka finished things off. And then uh, Glenn Godden, who was sensational 
and Major Junior mm. also got a, a mm. hat trick, but it was not enough <laughs> to uh, pull the San Diego calls through. <laughs> that crowd got their money's worth. Yeah, right? <laughs> yep, so that's the Wranglers. 8-4, their playoffs coming up. They're uh, not sitting atop the league like they were last year, but they got their demon. Mm. They're going to pull through. They're going to be in the dance. Yep. Some playoff hockey in Calgary, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're not going to have it with the Hitmen, so hockey fans better show up for them, tell <laughs> yeah. you what. Yeah. All right, uh, anything else really stand out to you from this one? Like, what was your main thought watching this? Uh, like I said, the the Huberto line stood out to me at even strength. I thought they could have had more than just the, the uh, power play goal there. Uh, I think the Kadri line struggled a bit. They had one or two shifts that were noteworthy. I I always like watching uh, Connor Zeri play, but they were in their own zone a little bit too much. And I, I find Kadri's trying to do too much when he has the puck, especially when he gets into the, the, the offensive zone. He's keeping it too long. He's trying to toe drag everyone. And it's short-circuiting a lot of their um, their rush chances especially. So I'd like to see a little bit more cooperation from the center on that line. But uh, – yeah, that's I'm not sure what about anything else. How about you? Yeah, I think it's interesting you brought that up. Uh the Flames do generate so much of their offense off the rush. And I noted one play in particular where Kadri came barreling over the blue line and he pulled up so fast. You saw that it kind of threw off the Buffalo defenders and it did give his line mates a bit of a chance to catch up. And I think Zary ended up getting like a fairly decent point shot off point shot off on that play, but mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some dangerous moments, but you're right when you see that it's like that little extra. Did you need that extra toe drag? But right. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's just a matter of wanting to get it done yourself or just not feeling like things are clicking where you necessarily trust 100% your line mate is going to put the puck in the back of the net. Yeah, I, I find when Kadri can sort of get in his own head a little bit and try to do too much, um, and sometimes it works out like that highlight real goal he had a few games ago and just sort of went end to end. But uh, every so often you see him, you know, trying to take the puck and, and go through two or three guys once he gets into the zone. It's just like every so often try to use your teammates a little bit more. Mm -hmm. He does end up bit, finishing but. the night. Yeah. Second on the team in shots. He had four. Uh, only Jonathan Huberto was ahead of him with five. But man, like Buffalo was blocking everything. They ended up with 22 yeah. block shots. To Jeez. Calgary 16. That's nuts. Well, they should be more desperate, right? So makes sense. Yeah, but I don't know. Do we think uh all right? Let's look at the Buffalo standings or the Eastern uh wild card standings. Yeah, Buffalo is still pretty still far there. out of it. They're five points, pardon me, six points. I was looking at Detroit, six points out of the second wild card spot. Washington currently occupies that spot and they have two games in hand on Buffalo. So it looks like the streak uh, It'll be rough. Yeah, might be up to 13 good. seasons, but man, Gonna kudos to, to their the fans for sticking it out. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, the funny thing is when you look at that roster, especially the blue line they have, you're like, this should be a better team than they are. Yeah. But, and up front, up you got the... and Thompson and Tuck and, you know, Benson's coming up and Krebs should be better than he is. But yeah, it's, I don't know. That, that should be a better team. It's, weird. it's almost like they're rebuilding their rebuild when you look at that. They uh, definitely are. Yeah. On that. Yeah. When you look at the defense right now, they've got four guys under the age of 24 and Yoki Haru, Daleen, Iram, who's been a pretty good addition so far, and Owen Power. Yeah. yeah that should be. That looks like it could be one of the best blue lines in the league in a, in a couple of years, right? So it's like if their yeah, scoring it's... had kept up at the beginning of the year, they would be in such a different position. Like when you look at Calgary, that disaster October, it's like, man, nothing was going right. But it right. wasn't even like Buffalo was like a total sieve. Like I know yeah, Lincoln had to work through some stuff and they gave him the leash to kind of do that, but. Well, now it's that like if they just could have scored more through those first couple exactly. months, they might be in the they might be in the hunt right now. With Middlestat gone, uh, Darlene leads the team in scoring, which gives you an idea. And you know that's a very good player, but how does you know, given who else they have on the team, how is a defenseman leading 
them in scoring. So they're going to figure it out at some point. <laughs> I don't know when, but it's it's not a bad looking roster on paper, at least. As a proud Rasmus Deline owner in fantasy hockey, I was there well aware of that because I also have Tage Thompson. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm so sorry to Pender, but I am going to bring this up. We had a a big upset in the 1v8 matchup in uh, oh. Flames Nation fantasy hockey. What happened? Uh, Hungry Like the Wolf has unseated the drunk broadcaster, ranked number one. <laughs> So tough sledding for Pender on that one. There's always next year. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's scoot along to our DoorDash Hungry for More with restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, everything else. DoorDash has anything you could ever want or need. Open up the app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with the default contactless delivery setting. And with DoubleDash, you can order from multiple places in the same delivery without extra fees. So everyone gets what they want and need. We talked about it a little bit, but, you know, there were many moments tonight where I was like, I am really enjoying watching Jonathan Huberdeau's game. Yeah, he was, um, especially the first couple periods, he was making plays that you, you hope to see from John, Jonathan Huberdeau, connecting, cross size stuff. He's really good east-west, which is part of the reason he struggled, I think, when he got here, because the Flames were very, especially under Sutter, north-south oriented right and he's he's not a great skater but he is a great um he's got a lot of deception to his game when he's on and, and you could see some of that today and he does seem to have some chemistry with even with kuzmenko and sharon govich especially in the offensive zone when they're going so it was it was fun to watch him tonight yeah he had an unbelievable pass to kuzmenko shortly after the krebs goal that's, yeah, that's right I think the shot ended up going wide or something like that but he was noticeable through the first half at the very least and gets credited with his 10th goal of the season. First time he's tallied since February 19th against Winnipeg and his third point in Calgary's last five games. Yeah, he's not quite a point per game in the latter half. That's actually a random prediction I made at the end of December that that would happen. He was close for a play. while there. He was hovering around yeah, I think that. he's 28 and 33 now, which is was pretty good. Two, second or third on the team, so. Maybe he can con continue this into the next season, and uh, he's, he's never going to be that ten and a half million dollar player. I think that's that dream has has died. But uh, if he could be a point per game guy, that that would be nice <laughs> for him and the team. I think. I know. I think you almost have to throw the contract out the window yeah. when you talk about him now. I know it's really difficult to do that, but you have to stop and look at what success can be for the player as they are now. So for that reason, I've you gotta. I've heard rumors that he's good in the room too, and he started to take sort of an elder statesman leadership role. So, and I think he's going to be here for the duration, or at least for another few years, because getting rid of that contract is almost impossible. So, yeah, if he can be productive and if he can be a good guy for, you know, the next spate of kids that are going to be coming up here as they rebuild, you know, he can provide some value. He can be a good pair for Peltier. That's right. Yeah. French dad, not the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm hungry for more of. What's got your tummy grumbling? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, uh, I said more experimentation yesterday, and I might actually repeat that today just because we're, we're down the stretch. Um, we don't need to see the Michael Backlund line anymore because wins don't matter too much, and we know it works. Um you know, Car Coronado's still sitting out. I don't know why. Let's mix things up if Kuzmeko's hurt or if you don't want to see him too much <laughs> anymore because you've seen enough. But let's get the kids in there. Let's move Pospisil around. Um, let's put Coronado with Zeri. Let's, you know, let's mix it up and see see what else sticks. Um, I remember at the end of the season, I think it was the COVID shortened season, and Sutter had come on and they weren't going to make the playoffs. But you saw him put together the Kachuk, Goudreau, and Lindholm line. And you saw that start to make magic. Mm -hmm. And then that carried into the, the next season, obviously, which uh, it became a thing, right? So that may not happen. Obviously, we're not looking to make the best, you know, even strength line in the league at the end of the year. <laughs> that's, that's a pipe dream. But can we find something else that works? Maybe. 
you want to see them revert to when you were like a kid in the bathtub making potions with like every bottle of whatever <laughs> you could find there. That's a good point Let's... you bring up about Daryl, though. If you think he's fun at an in-person press conference, those Zooms were a real treat. I remember asking him <laughs> about that kind of once that bubble season had. We knew kind of all was lost. There was this one really demoralizing loss to Winnipeg. Mm. I believe it was a 4-1 loss. But after that, it was ask, I asked him, like, what can you still gain from this last stretch of games, even though you know yeah. you can't? find your way in and he's like this is my chance to see what we really have in some of these players and who's working where and we did start to see where yeah, a lot of that stuff started to come together they played some better hockey Matthew Phillips almost scored in his first NHL game yeah alas <laughs> but it was watchable <laughs> hockey which is yeah. what matters at the end of the day and we're still getting that now which is nice so yeah let's let's see what else we can find yeah and it's nice to see that Zary still has that bite in his first couple games back from that upper body injury. He ends up, yeah, yeah with a solid uh, 16-49 ice time, two shots on net, dash one. Yeah, it was, uh, I thought the, that line faded as it went, but um, I, I really noticed him and them in the first period for sure. That is our DoorDash Hungry for More. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of 15 bucks or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code NATION25. 25% off up to 10 bucks value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the app in the App Store and enter code NATION25. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got your road ahead and we will take some uh, burning questions and rants and. <laughs> Their tomfoolery and shenanigans and such. Stay with us. Greta, it's our home away from home for Afterburner. We'll be there for live watch parties throughout the season. Should be your spot regardless. Before, during, and after the game, grab a cocktail, something from the menu, let the games begin, or maybe you get into the game yourself. Over 50 arcade games from vintage to state of the art. Load up some credits on that Greta game card of yours and get at it. Greta Calgary, located at 213 10th Avenue Southwest. Check them out online, gretabar.com. It's nearly the best time of the year. Playoff hockey is around the corner. And I'll tell you what, the Grego Resort and Casino is the place to be. Cheer on your favorite teams with us at the Stage Bar. Enjoy the big game on one of those huge screens over the bar with friends, drinks, and delicious food. Let's go visit gregoresortandcasino.ca for more information. And while I've got your attention, let me tell you about the happy hour at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Let's make the most of the day and spend your afternoons with great drinks and food. Join us at the Stage Bar and Blaze Bar and Grill for our new happy hour every day, two till five. Enjoy food, drinks, all starting at five bucks. Make the most of your days. Visit GregoResortandCasino.ca for more information. If you're thinking of buying or selling your home in the Calgary area, there's one guy you've got to talk to. That's Derek Newman of the Derek Newman Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Buying or selling doesn't really matter. Derek does it all. He's a volunteer in the community, active in sports around the city, whether it's golf, curling, huge Flames fans. So talking sports or talking about the real estate market, definitely give him a shout. He's approachable, trustworthy, and hardworking. Also, Derek's got a pretty vast network. He's even got access to some homes often that aren't even on the market yet. And you can ask him about his complimentary home staging consultation as well. Buying or selling, call him or text him right now at 403-619-6661. Derek will make it easy for you. Get Derek and his network to work for you. That's Derek Newman. Email him at dnewman at cirrealty.ca. More post-game reaction right here. We're back on Afterburner. Forgot to mention the other silver lining in this. Power play went 50% tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just need the other team to score on their own net. and We're golden. Perfect. Oh, they can't do yep. that every night? <laughs> you know what could have been the highlight of the night was that Pospisil breakaway if he'd actually taken the slap shot and scored on it. That, that would have been, been electric. I think I actually yeah. gasped when he faked that. I love that he went for the second shot and almost scored too, though. So Yeah, yeah. The him. second one, it was close. It looked like it rung off the bottom of the uh, outside of the post there. but Yeah. Heck, that, that was nice. pretty good for him. 
So we talked about the Wranglers a little earlier, just because I'm seeing some more draft chat in the mm-hmm. uh, in the chat here. Uh, I mean, if you don't want to just watch the games online, I think uh, Red Deer and Medicine Hat are set for a pretty good first round of playoffs. If you want to go see old Gavin McKenna, and I saw a Celebrini mm-hmm. mention in the chat there. Obviously, he's not around our neck of the woods, but no. you do have the likes of uh, Gavin McKenna, who's going to be a huge 2026 pick. And then you've got Basha, Caden Lindstrom, a top prospect mm-hmm. for this year's NHL draft. He's hopefully going to return soon. He has skated with the team. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks, which is good, but there'll be some uh, really good draft picks to be watching to see what they do in their playoffs as that rolls around starting next week here. But we are going to get to the road ahead with Village Honda, located at Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. New in stock inventory on the ground. Start your automotive adventures at Village Honda, where new vehicle pricing is MSRP. So now Calgary is going to hit the road for a pair midweek before returning to the dome. On Tuesday, they're in Chicago to face Connor Bedard. Bummer, we didn't get to see him in Calgary this season, but a tilt between a Calder favorite and a guy who should be in the conversation is going to be fun. Yeah, it's uh, Bedard is a human highlight reel when he's playing well. So it's obviously Chicago's st- still really lousy, but also obviously they've played very well against the Flames, or you can say the Flames have played very badly against them. So it's going to be interesting. That one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes uh, coming up here. Yeah, Flames are not a playoff team. They've been in the shit, but Zary still leads all rookies with a plus 16 rating. I guess it'd be plus 15 after tonight, yeah, tonight. But, yeah. but second only to Bedard in points per game. He's averaging over half a point per game coming into tonight, which is pretty Back. crazy when you consider some of the other rookies they're up against in that category. And Zary has not played as many games as some of them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the team must be pretty happy with what they've seen out of Zary, especially because I'm not sure they had any sort of expectations of this heading into this season. I thought, you know, this was going to be another AHL year for him. I wanted to see him kind of dominate at that level and then come up. But he did, you know, 10 games right out, out of the gate. He was fantastic. And then he landed in Calgary and he was a breath of fresh air. He came in and was like, holy cow, this kid is, is you know, taking over some shifts every so often. He he looked like he was already an established NHLer. So it's it's been one of the biggest, most pleasant surprises, I think, uh, for the Flames this year. And uh, Chicago will have two days off going into that game. Then closing out the road trip against Airdrie's Jake Neighbors and the St. Louis Blues. That's on Thursday, but that's going to be a huge game for St. Louis. They're five points away from overtaking Vegas for the second wild card. Golden Knights have a game in hand, and the Blues face Vegas on Monday. So there's going to be a lot on the line, and the Flames will uh, for them, yeah. <laughs> need to be up to the test. Like you can, Those games tend to get a little heated with St. Louis sometimes, and they can really play spoiler with this one. Yeah, if the Flames are playing loose, then and the other team's a little uptight because they they've got something to lose. It sometimes those can go very badly for the team that's playing for something. I know I've watched the Flames on the other end have those games at the end of seasons where it's like, it just yeah, this doesn't work. No, sir. And then we wrap up the road ahead with the next home game. That comes next Saturday against the LA Kings. They sit third in the Pacific, but don't have a lot of breathing room there. LA is on a three-game heater, but they do have to face Vancouver and Edmonton on the road before they roll into Calgary. And uh, we're at the point now where we have only five home games left in this regular season. Yeah, the Kings... It's funny, they started the season out, and I was like, oh, these guys look like they're going to be contenders this year. And then they went on that hideous skid, but it looks like they're kind of regaining their footing at the right time. And sometimes the playoffs are all about, you know, it's 50% talent and tactics and strategy and about 50% getting hot at the right time. So mm-hmm. that happens for them. Remember that uh, that Stanley Cup run in 2012? Well, Vancouver yep. had won the, the President's trophy and everyone thought they'd be primed for another deep run didn't think there was that much of a stanley cup final hangover and (laughs) 
You're going Man. to <laughs> Yeah, Jonathan <laughs> Quick turned into Jonathan Quick. That was wild. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's our look at the road ahead. Village Honda has a huge selection of used vehicles, all makes, all models for all budgets. There's over 70 units on site and they can access over 400 more in their dealer group. Definitely worth the trip. Located in the Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. Jack, you said you got a few questions here for us. Markstrom Wolf split here on out. That's what I would like to see. I honestly, I'm not mad if you split it 50 50, you get Wolf up over 10 games played this year. Yeah, that makes intuitively, that makes the most sense to me too. We discussed it last night as well. And it was like, obviously, they're going to want to sit down with Markstrom and say, here's the plan. We don't need to play you every game given the circumstances. If you want to, let's talk about it. But um, yeah let's not play Markstrom into the, into the ground. There's no reason to, and there's a lot of reason to get more reps for the kid. Sorry, this just caught my eye from David W. The Bruins last season won the president's trophy, but blew a three, one lead in their conference quarterfinal losing in seven games to the second Eastern wildcard Panthers. They also dropped a three, nothing lead to Philadelphia in 2009. <laughs> I don't have beef with the Bruins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another actual question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Kadri stays in Calgary for the remainder of his contract? I think that really depends on the conversations he can have with Craig yeah. Conroy and the rest of the management team at the end of the season. They need to be blunt about what the plan is. There needs to be a plan and there need to be expectations set. But we did see that he's had a lot of fun this season working with players who are taking the first steps of in their NHL careers. And maybe that is something that buoys him and he wants to stick around for. Yeah. If you'd asked me at the end of last season about that same question, I would have said no, because he looked absolutely miserable. Like he, he had thrown in the towel by, you know, the last quarter, I think last year, he, he was definitely one of the more unhappy players when it came to what, whatever was going on. So despite this being year, one you're of right. the better performers at the Up end until of the day, the last 10 or 20 games, he was, he had completely bailed. <laughs> you could tell too, but this year you're right. He looks way more um, happy and reinvigorated between the kids. And maybe he will be happy with that sort of mentor role going forward. And depending on what future moves look like, maybe they are in a contending position and he can be the, the stately veteran. Yep. Entirely possible. A lot can happen but in five years. He, he can also come to them at some point and say, get me out of here. So he I guess we'll could. see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will the players be as shocked and disappointed after this season like last year? No. I hope not. No, their their expectations were definitely tempered going into yeah. this season. I think they were probably honestly preparing themselves for a rougher ride. Like I know they're more than likely going to miss playoffs and there's been some notable departures, but there has been more upside than what we saw last season. Because last season they came in with all the hope in the world, thinking they're a contender and they had the door slammed shut in their faces so hard. Yeah, to the degree that a lot of people at the end of the season said, I don't want to be here anymore, mm -hmm. right? So that had obviously turned pretty toxic, uh, you know, halfway through the season. I think it had already begun to do that. But you're right. I think they were a lot more realistic about where they were this year, especially when they started to understand that Lindholm wasn't going to stay and Hannafin wasn't going to stay. You know, there was going to be this sort of churn of, of veterans because um, they just weren't going to sign. So it's, they seem to, understand what they are and where they are and um they they're certainly not throwing the towel like i said i think they're playing competent hockey given the roster they have now but uh yeah i don't, I don't think anyone's gonna end up that i can see uh, unhappy at the at the end of the year at least not the way they were last year and we're hearing guys actually say that they're happy that people who are in the room do want to be there want to be there yeah that's right yeah, so I imagine even though things still aren't perfect, that room is probably a lot more fun to be in this time around. Right. 
Is it possible that Coronado is tired? I can't see any other reason to have him eating popcorn and not playing at either level. Well, there are many reasons why that could be going down. I don't know if uh, tired is one of them. Granted, it is a big jump coming from a relatively short college hockey season to the grind of an AHL schedule, an NHL schedule. I'd be surprised if that's the case right now. They've had yeah, a I don't think he's just tired. In between and he's... You know, how old is he now? 21? At that age, I could stay up all night and <laughs> go to work and then go to school <laughs> and stay up all night again. Obviously, that's not the same as playing pro hockey, but um, I, I would think you know, he should have his legs by now, given how much time they've had off between games there. Yep, and sure, there's a reason. And from what I know of Ryan Huska, I'm sure Coronado knows why he's there and what he'll need to do to get back in that lineup. Yep. Does a Canadian team win the cup? Fuck, man, I mm. have not been alive to see a Canadian team win the cup. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. This, <laughs> I guess there's who we got Toronto, Vancouver, Winnipeg. Yeah. Maybe that might be the best chance we've had in a while, actually. <laughs> Oh, what do you think out of those three? Who's who could win it? I don't want to say. <laughs> You're going to say Toronto? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Go with Winnipeg. I was going to say I really like Vancouver, but I feel like picking any of them know. is jinxing any of them. And I just, I, I would love to see. A Canadian team win. I am happy to jinx Vancouver. So, yeah. <laughs> Just pick them. Yep. I have old grudges, scars that haven't healed fully. And I have a Pavel Bure jersey that has uh, mascara stains and face paint on the sleeve still because <laughs> sometimes you need to be reminded not to put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. But we've got Canadian teams who will be in the mix. It'd be super cool to see them go far. I mean, I would just love to watch another Toronto Boston series. Yes. Like we all fun. win when those Canadian teams are just at least in the mix, at least for the first round. The first round is the best time of year. It really is. It, for some reason, you just, there's so many uh, series, right? So every so often, you know, two or three of them are always just fantastic. Although I would say I, I want to go back to the one v sixteen. Yeah, I don't like. I don't love seeing the same matchups all the time. Yeah, I'm not not big on the wild card stuff. Or you go full chaos and go back to the '80s mode where it's league wide, bring everyone into it. Let's do it. Did I say Write one versus letter, sixteen before? What's that? Did I say one versus sixteen before? Right, one versus eight. <laughs> yeah, one versus eight. Yeah. We really want to chaos. We go one versus 16. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Screw it. Washington, Vancouver. <laughs> Actually, this would be good matchups. We have Philadelphia, New York, Florida, Vegas. Florida, Vegas. Oh, I'd like to see that. Yeah, that would be very fun. Tampa, Colorado, LA, Carolina, Nashville, Dallas. Boston, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Toronto. Yep. No, we got to do that. We have to do that. Yep. That should be the new one. Someone write the commish. <laughs> All right. I think we got time for one or two more. Do you think William Stromgren will make it up to the club? I really liked him during the prospect games. Oh, you were, sh you were shaking your head before I was even done reading <laughs> that one, Kent. <laughs> yeah. Toolsy guy, but nowhere near uh, NHL ready. He started to play better with the Wranglers, I've heard, the last month or so. But, yeah, he's um, he's a ways away from cracking uh, the parent roster, I'd say. Yeah. Do you know what a ceiling for him looks like? Not really. Um, his progression and development has been very poor since he was drafted. Like, he was – I think he was – Full value as a second rounder. I would have preferred uh, Logan Stankovan, but <laughs> um, they picked him. And when you when you watch him, you know that's he's a big guy. He's got 
good hands. He can definitely skate, so you can see why they like him. But he hasn't taken those steps that you hope for. And the big thing with um, prospects is you need to see those big steps forward because for anyone except the most elite, they have to get drastically better to be an NHLer because it's the top 1% of players in the world. And he just hasn't done that yet. Now, he does seem to be finally getting better in the AHL now, but um, it, he has to get a lot better just to be dominant in the AHL before ever making it to the NHL. Good catch on the headphone there. No, I, I lost it. It's oh, you lost it. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, for those uh, who want to know, Stromgren is in his first full AHL season. He played just two games with the Wranglers last year. Uh, he's played 58 contests this time around. He's got four goals and 14 assists, and he's dash 10 so far. Right. Yeah, playing winger. All right, we'll do the last one, Jack. Is a compliance buyout possible with Huberto in the next CBA? That's a Ryan Pike question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have not inspected the CBA, uh, especially when it comes to um, the next renegotiation. So let's say maybe. Yeah. An excellent question, Mickey. And you've asked expensive. the wrong people. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know if they'd swallow that. You know, <laughs> sometimes the flames have pill. to take the L and like sometimes we have to take the L and I got to take the L on that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but that would be a, I wouldn't want to write that check. No. Uh, we do have a Pike bomb. Well, not Pike bomb, just Pike math. Pike math. Uh, with the Wranglers win and Henderson lost tonight, uh, Calgary's magic number to clinch a playoff spot is seven. So seven Wranglers points earned. Potential Henderson points lost will clinch them a postseason burst. Then we can go watch some playoff hockey down at the Dome. Let's do it. Fingers crossed. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight, gang. A disappointing one for Calgary, but a lot closer than the final score showed. Had a lot of fun watching them. Barn Burner is back tomorrow. Have a good one.